Good morning and welcome to Friendship Alliance Church. My name is Jason, I'm the pastor here. We're gonna get started with the message in just a moment, but first we wanna share with you a couple different ways that you can connect with us. There's actually a lot of different ways that you can connect with us. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Listed below here, you'll see our website. There you'll receive updates, as well as ways to do your tithe and your offering by clicking on the giving link. Uh, something else that we have on our website is something called Deep and Wide. If you go underneath weekly messages, there will be follow-up questions to today's message that you can use to, to dig deeper into God's word with as an individual or with a small group or whatever the case may be. So check that out. Uh, we have an active prayer chain. If you want to be involved in that prayer chain, there will be a link in the video description. There will also be links to all the songs that we do at our in-person gathering. So uh, you can feel free to check those out, sing along in some way, shape, or form. Uh, going back to Facebook, we have a Facebook group called Friendship Family. This is a platform for you to share what God is doing in your life, to uh, engage and interact with one another. So if you're on Facebook, go to our Facebook group page called Friendship Family. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with the message now. We hope that, uh, that it builds your faith. We hope that it uh, encourages you, inspires you. So with that being said, we're going to get into the word now, and may God bless you. All right, here we go, Friendship Alliance Church. We are starting something brand new this week, a brand new series that I'm calling Iceberg. Uh, that is going to be our message series for the next several weeks. Uh, I thought about waiting a couple weeks on this, but God kept stirring my heart, and so here we are. Uh, this is gonna lead us actually right in through Christmas, and I know it doesn't sound like a Christmas type theme. Uh, it'll get there eventually, but just hear me out on it. So uh, everyone's like, oh, what's our Christmas thing that we're doing this year? I'm like, uh, it's iceberg. And so I'm like, that doesn't sound really Christmassy. So one of the one of the suggestions was we should do a, a, a COVID Christmas. And they, they said that jokingly. But I'm like, oh, that just sounds terrible. But <laughs> So we're going to do icebergs. We're going to be talking about icebergs. And uh, let, me, let me show you the story that kind of led me down this path. So, so months ago, I was talking uh, with someone at the church uh, about ministry and, and everything that is taking place. Uh, we talked about how we, how we gather in different ways, and uh, whether in person, online, uh, through different screens, different living rooms. And this person said, it really is kind of like an iceberg right now where you can't really see everything that is going on. And so that really got my gears turning about, okay, what, 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 what can I talk about as far as icebergs go? And so I, I began praying and reading God's word and outlining different ideas. And there are so many examples uh, of icebergs in scripture. You may not believe it, but there are. There are so many examples of icebergs in scripture. But before I explain this, let me, let me throw a little bit of uh, science at you here for a minute. So uh, I, I'm a firm believer that, that science and faith do not have to be enemies of one another, that they can complement one another. But let me share with you about icebergs and, and why icebergs are mostly underwater. And, and density is the reason for it. Because the densities of ice and seawater are so close in value, the, the, ice, floats in, uh, the ice floats low in the water. And this means that, that ice has nine-tenths or 90% of water's density. So 90% of an iceberg is beneath the water's surface. And I thought that was fascinating because, I mean, I always knew that, that the majority of an iceberg was under the surface, but I didn't know it was that much of a difference, that, that we only see 10% of the iceberg as compared to the 90% that is underwater. And there are so many examples in scripture on, on this concept that can relate to icebergs, about how there's so much more going on beneath the surface and how we only see the tip of the iceberg. Th think of Jesus speaking in parables. There's so much going on than just the, the parable that he's sharing. There's a truth. There's a huge truth underneath that parable. Th think of the prophets telling their audience something that won't happen for hundreds of years or even in their lifetime, there's so much more to this that you don't see. You're just hearing the tip of the iceberg. A very iceberg type verse is Isaiah 55 verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my, are your ways are my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher 
than your ways. And so we see that iceberg nature that we don't see sometimes God's ways, that we only sometimes see the tip of the iceberg. So that's what we're going to look at over the next several weeks. We're going to look at trials, situations. We're going to look at, at people where there is way more going on beneath the surface. And to start this truth off, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 is where we're going to be in God's Word today, uh, specifically verses 1 through 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And as you are turning there, would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, I thank you that you have gathered us on different living rooms, different screens, different gatherings. Father, I pray that you would be glorified through your word today. Uh, Lord, uh, I do not want to deliver this message on my own strength, nor will I ever want to, Lord. So please use me for your kingdom and glory. Help me to share your word. Stir the hearts of your people, Father. And we give you all the praise and glory in your name. Amen. Amen. So my first point here, well, let me, let, let's read Romans 5 verses 1 through 5 first. It says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's another piece of peace for you if we've been on the topic of peace. But let, let me move on here. Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And here's where I'm going to be sharing the majority of the message today. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. So the message title today is glory. We're going to look at different areas of glory that God provides. And the first one I want to look at is through access. Access. I, and I don't want to spend too much time on the, on the first part of, of Romans chapter 5, verse 1, because we spent the last four weeks talking about peace. And if you, if you want to hear some messages on peace, be sure to go to our, our YouTube channel. But I don't want to overlook this truth, though, that we have been justified by faith in Jesus Christ. And because of what Christ has done, we can have peace with God. That Jesus has given us access to God because we have that relationship has been reconciled. This is something to rejoice about. This is something to boast about. Amen? But, but our boast was never meant to point towards us, but always to the awesomeness of God. That's why the... The Bible tells us, uh, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. But in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, gives us several reasons to boast about the glory of God. That we can boast, we can rejoice in the access which we have gained to God through Jesus Christ. That there is this amazing access that we couldn't gain ourselves, but it was made possible through Christ alone. We can celebrate in that access. We can rejoice in it. I remember um, my two oldest boys, Rob and Tim, they were going to their, their first concert and they were so excited. They were going to go see Rush of Fools, uh, a great group. Uh, we just sang one of their songs just a little bit ago. Go check them out, Rush of Fools, go on iTunes. And uh, so we, we went to one of their shows and, and I'm not sure how this relationship started, but my former boss and her husband, Sherry and Billy, they... Uh, uh, they were friends with this band, Rush of Fools, and so whenever they were in the general area, they would try to hang out and chat, and so since I worked for her, uh, I was able to hang out with them too, just an awesome group of guys. So we went to one of their shows together, and, uh, and they saw me coming like, through, the, uh, through to get a ticket. They're like, oh, it's the Sherry's guy. Like Everyone knew me as the Sherry's guy. In fact, one time I was at the Seattle airport, and someone said, hey, it's the Sherry's guy. I kid you not, that has happened to me. So anyway... Uh, we, we go to the show, they, they see that I'm the, 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 the Sherry's guy is there, and so they're done with the show, and they're like, hey, do you want to go hang out in our tour bus afterwards? And so my boys looked at me like, that sounds like the coolest thing ever. So myself, Sherry and Billy, and my, my two boys, they, uh, we go back after the show, everyone else has gone home, and here we are chilling on their tour bus, just hearing their stories about how life is going. Uh, they signed their 
drumsticks and hand them to my boys. And my boy, this is like the greatest thing to ever happen to my kids. They were so excited, like, oh my goodness, we have this special access to, to the band that we get to hang out with them on their tour bus. But, but looking back in God's word here, everyone, everyone is going to have that moment where you, where you are standing before God Almighty. And it is in that exact moment that when, when our faith is in Jesus, we're going to understand how special this access to God is. You're, you're going to realize the, the height, the depth, the, the, the loving, sacrificial love that Jesus went through to provide access to the Father. We're going to be standing like, oh my goodness, look at this access that has been given to us. Like we know this truth. We, we understand this truth. And if your faith is in Jesus, you put your faith in that truth. But this is something that we still haven't fully realized yet until we are standing before God someday. We, are, we're just, we know the tip of the iceberg. We don't see the whole thing yet. We know of our access. We have faith in that access. And we see through God's word what Jesus has done to provide that access for us. We can rejoice in it, but we still haven't fully experienced it yet. So there's that, there's that iceberg moment here where we haven't fully realized it. Our hope is in it, but we haven't fully seen it yet. Going back in, in Romans 5, uh, we boast in the hope of the glory of God. So, so we boast in the, in the access in which Jesus gives you and I. We boast in the glory of God. And, and we see these two glories at work. First, through the access. And second, the, the hope of the glory of God, this future glory. Now, before, before I go further about this future glory, I want to I highlight the word hope for a moment. The, the word hope, the, the way we use it today is that we attach it with some uncertainty. Like, I, I hope this happens. I hope that happens. Uh, we, we do it all the time in, in terms of uncertainty. Um, for, since I'm in, here in Washington, I'm, I'm surrounded by, by Seahawks fans. And, and they, they hope that their Seahawks can get back on track. They just won on Thursday, and it looks like they are. Like, there's a lot of certainty around here that, that Russell Wilson can, can turn it around. There, there's less certainty. They hope that their defense can get it together. Their defense has been lacking this year. So they, they hope that their defense comes around, but they don't have certainty in it. Everyone I talk to says, oh, I don't know about that defense. There's some uncertainty. So they hope that the defense gets together. So the hope that we see in scripture though, the hope is, is different. It, it, it describes something that is certain, but not fully realized yet. It is certain but we haven't fully experienced it yet. It's like that iceberg. We see the tip of the iceberg. There's the hope, but we haven't fully seen it yet. We haven't seen the whole iceberg yet. We have hope. We have certainty and, and the glory of God, his future glory. We have certainty as believers that our ultimate destiny is to experience the glory of God as citizens of heaven. And that glory is all made possible through Jesus Christ, through the access that he gives us. So we, we, have, we can boast in the glory of, of that future glory of God where we are standing before him someday. And we also have glory in the, in the access in which Jesus has given us. There's also another glory that is mentioned here, and that is glory through suffering. Glory through suffering. That doesn't... That doesn't doesn't sound like it makes sense, but we're going to see this here in just a moment. But Katie and I were, we just celebrated our, our 19th uh, anniversary a couple weeks ago. And we were going out to dinner with a couple from church, Sid and Carol. Uh, we went out to dinner and uh, maybe that's an awkward segue talking about suffering, but I, I'm happily married and we had a great time at dinner. But anyway, so, so the question was brought up at dinner of what is it like leading a church right now? How is it going leading a church in the year 2020? And I've thought about it and I, I've, I've thought about this verse a lot. And, uh, and I said to them, you know, you know, in the Bible, in the book of James, where it says, let perseverance finish its work so that you will be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Like I said, I really wish perseverance would finish its job already. I, got, I mean, I was, said it jokingly, but there's a part of me that's serious. I wish perseverance would finish its work already. 
And you may be saying the same thing about a certain aspect in your life right now. Like your, your job may, may be taking a lot of perseverance right now and you may be saying to yourself, okay, perseverance, would you please finish your work already? Like, please. There may be financial difficulties that you are facing right now where you're saying, okay, perseverance, please wrap it up. Like, I get it. You have done a good job in, in maturing me, but please, would you finish your work? There could be a relationship that you are in right now where, where it's taking a lot of perseverance and you're, you're praying that it doesn't feel like that anymore. Like, please, perseverance, would you, would you finish your work? There, there are so many people that, that are facing struggles in, in the complexity of this year. And some of those struggles are, are seen and we notice them. But, but a lot of the time, these struggles are, are like that iceberg where you can't see what is below the surface. That we just see the tip of the iceberg, but we don't see the true struggle that a lot of people are facing. Pastor Craig Rochelle says this, everyone is facing a battle you know nothing about. And I, th I find that to be so true that we just see the tip of the iceberg. We don't see the struggle that, that people are facing in many ways. When I, when I think of social media and, and the problem that social media can, cr can create in us is that so much of what we view and so much of what we see is just the 10%. We just see the tip of the iceberg. We see that, that perfectly filtered photo about everything in life is going well. You don't see what is below the surface, right? A lot of people don't share that 90% of what is beneath the water there with that iceberg that is in their life. And so what we do is we, we see our struggle, we see our full iceberg, and what we do is we compare it to the other person's 10% and we get frustrated. Like, why is everything working out for them and why am I struggling with all of this stuff right now? And it's because you're, you're looking at the 10% and not seeing the other 90% and we struggle with that and social media keeps adding fuel to the fire. Like, why is everything going well for them and why is it such a struggle for me right now? At this point, at this point, there, there is very little. There is very little that can make me go like, whoa, or make me take a step back. Like, I can't believe like that happened. There's very, very little of that that could happen to me this year in regards to this. Like, it's like, oh, I can't believe that just happened. The story of Chadwick Boseman made me go like, whoa, like this year. I did not see that coming. Chadwick Boseman, uh, for those of you who don't know, a very talented actor, uh, most, uh, most of his most well-known roles, uh, played Jackie Robinson in the movie 41. Uh, he was uh, the lead character in Marvel's Black Panther. Like that's probably his most notorious film. Uh, that movie made like a bajillion dollars and he was the star of it. But, but he hid his struggle from nearly everyone. No one knew what was going on in his life. They only saw the 10%, they only saw the tip of the iceberg. They didn't see the 90%, the struggle that he was facing. Because you see Chadwick Boseman during that time, during, while still filming, was battling stage four colon cancer. And he continued to, to film through this struggle, through the pain, which, which so few people knew about. Not even his co-stars really knew what was going on. And when he passed away at the age of 43 on August 28th, everyone just kind of took a step back and said, whoa, I did not see that coming. I did not know of his struggle. And one of his co-stars, I forget which film it was, but one of his co-stars didn't know his struggle. Most of the people that he worked with didn't know his struggle. And so he was sharing uh, in an interview his problem of not seeing the, the whole picture, not seeing everything that was going on in his life. And let me just share with you a clip of this interview. He says this, well, I, th I think he was a little bit precious. And uh, he was being surrounded by 
by people who are fawning over him. He's got a practitioner who's massaging his back. He, as he walks off the set, he's got a, a makeup lady who's massaging his feet and his girlfriend is there holding his hand. And I'm saying to myself, like, did, did the stardom go to his head? Like, did all that, all that Marvel money, did that go to his head? And then at that part of the interview, he, he can barely keep it together. And he says, I, I regret even, I regret even having those thoughts because I, I, we're out here on set. He's like, it's 104 degrees, this movie that they were working on, 104 degrees. They're, they're running around with equipment of like 40 pounds on their back. And I'm going through these scenes with them and I had no idea. And he just loses it in this interview. He just completely breaks down and starts crying. He's like, I had no idea what he was going through and he he had to stop the interview and the the person that was given the interview she she stopped doing the interview and she just came alongside him and said look we didn't know like we didn't know what he was going through we didn't see everything that was going on we didn't see his struggle and i want to urge each of you to to continue to lift one another up in prayer Commit yourself to, to pray for that, that iceberg in someone's life, that struggle, that battle that you don't see going on right now. You're just seeing maybe the 10% of that person's life. I want you to pray for that iceberg in someone's life, that unknown struggle that someone could be facing. Now, back to let's get back to Romans 5 here. We, we know that God can use our, our struggle can you to use our struggle, use our hardship to, to strengthen you and I? Let me, let's read back in uh, Romans chapter 5. We also suffer in our glory, uh, in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. This can be one of the toughest biblical principles to embrace, especially when you're in the middle of a very difficult season of life. Sometimes all that we see, all that we hear, all that we feel is the struggle. We, we, we just feel the, the 10% of the iceberg, the here and the now. But God sees the whole picture. He sees what it can produce in your life. He sees the other 90% of that iceberg. Now, I, I don't think you've been able to see it, but uh, I'm not reading from the, the Bible that I typically read from. Usually I have like a study Bible and my, my tablet next to me and I kind of read off these verses, but I've been reading from this Bible with you this morning. And, and we're going to get to the uniqueness of this Bible in just a moment. But let me just say, I, I was very reluctant to answer the call to ministry at first. I was unsure of myself and what I wanted to do in comparison to what God wanted me to do. Uh, I lacked confidence, which was a major part of it. Uh, I questioned how, how God could, could use me. And so I didn't act on God's initial nudging to pursue ministry. And as, as a lot of you that are watching know, my, my father passed away at the age of 43 in a car accident. And there, there was pain, uh, there continues to be pain that is still there today. And it was at that moment, it was at that moment that I got my, my wake-up call. It, it was time to, to answer the call that God had given me. My dad loved the Lord. He was passionate in serving the Lord. It wasn't perfect, it wasn't perfect, but loved the Lord love the Lord, serve the Lord. And I wanted to, to honor my father. But, but most importantly, most importantly, I wanted to answer the call that my heavenly father had given me. So this, this Bible that I've been reading from today, uh, this was the Bible that was recovered at the site of my dad's car accident. They found this Bible near him uh, after the accident. He, 
he always made sure that he had God's word with him at all times, in his heart, on his lips, with him at all times. And, and for me, this, this Bible is a continual reminder of Romans chapter 5, where it says, and let me read it again, we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. That hardship, that pain that is still there today, it gives me perseverance. It built my character. For those of you who know me, I'm, I'm a character anyway, but it, it built my character and it gave me hope in the middle of pain, in the middle of heartache, that God still had a plan for my life. Is there, is there an iceberg in your life today? Is there a struggle? Is, is there a battle that no one sees right now? In, in, the, in the chat, if you're watching this, in the chat, you don't have to get specific. In the chat, say, pray for my iceberg. Pray for my iceberg. Is that, if that's you today, I want to pray with you. Pray, put, put that in the chat. Pray for my iceberg. Once again, this is one of the hardest biblical concepts to embrace, especially when you're in the middle of a difficult time like so many are right now. But God can use that struggle he can use that hardship to make you stronger and to build you up. And, and God gives you and I someone to remember this hope, that this truth, and that is the Holy Spirit. Look with me in verse 5 in Romans chapter 5. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Our hope in Christ does not put us to shame does not, and it does not return void. Amen? Our future glory is made possible by Jesus. He's provided that access for us. And while our, our present, while our here and now can be so loud, and that's the word I keep thinking of when I think about present day, it is so loud right now everywhere you go. It can be difficult to remember the eternal nature and the glory, the glory of God. We can get caught up and look in the trap of just seeing the tip of the iceberg, the, the here and the now and the present, and not remembering the other 90%, the eternal. And really that eternal aspect of God, our, our eternal glory, the eternal glory that God provides, that's way more than 90%, amen? It's like, 99.999, right? Because we are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. We're here for, it's just a blip on the radar for our time here compared to the eternal glory in God's presence. But that, that hope, that, that hope of, of glory is coupled with God's love. And God reveals his love through his Holy Spirit, which whom he has given to us. The hope, once again, the hope is, is not uncertainty here in God's word. It is certainty of something not yet fulfilled. And, and the hope in the future glory of God through all the things that we have talked about, through access by Jesus, through, through his future glory and our, and our future glorification of being in his presence as citizens of heaven. The future glory that God will strengthen and build us through the struggle all of that glory will be fulfilled. Not if, not maybe. It will be fulfilled. And we will not be put to shame because of that hope that we have in him. The Holy Spirit will remind us of this truth. The Holy Spirit will remind us of God's love which has been poured into each of our hearts. And it is all made possible through that access, once again, that Jesus gives us. Now let me share with you, let me share with you one more example before I close this out. The, the average, an, an average size iceberg 
weighs around 150,000 tons. That's pretty heavy. The average, average iceberg, 150,000 tons. And, and I find it so incredible how, how something like density makes an iceberg float on the water, just floats a little bit. That 10% floats on the top and then we, the 90% underneath. 150 tons floating in the ocean. But do you know what is more incredible than that? That God's love and the hope and the certainty that we have in him keeps us afloat. That, that the weight of, of, of the world, sometimes it can be unbearable at times, but God keeps us afloat through his love. But it goes further than that. It goes further than that, okay. He does more than keep us afloat, okay. He does more. He does more. Say, say it with me. He does more than keep us afloat, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. This is the verse I'm going to close on. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That sounds like more than staying afloat, doesn't it? That, that sounds like more than, than keeping our head above water. That we can have hope and this hope will not fail. It'll do more than to just help us to get by. We will soar on wings like eagles. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not be faint. There is hope in the glory of God. Amen. Continue to put your hope, continue to put your assurance in the Lord and in his Glory. Amen, church? Amen. Would you join me as we close out in prayer? Father, we, we come before you and we have hope. And by hope, I don't mean anything that is uncertain. We have full certainty in you, God, in your glory, in your kingdom. And that is all made possible through the access, through your Son, that out of your love and out of your mercy that, that you provided your Son that we can have that relationship restored with you, Father. And right now, I want, I want to pray for anyone who is who has that iceberg in their life, that struggle that maybe we don't see right now. I want to pray for that person, Lord, whoever that person may be, Father. We pray that your glory, your love would, would reign on them, Lord, that they would know that, that your love never fails, your mercy never fails, Father, and that you are going to use the, the struggle to, to build us up, to strengthen us. Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, for, for all that you are. I thank you for our time together. May, may your word equip us once again to live out the call that you have given us, Lord. Help us to live out this confidence of, of your glory, your kingdom, and our citizenship with you in heaven someday, Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I, I love you so much, Friendship Alliance Church. Uh, I hope that you are blessed by today's iceberg message. Uh, if you think someone else could be blessed by it, be sure to, to share uh, the word. We want to get the good news out there. Amen. We want to we wanna share uh, the, the good news in anywhere we are. So share, like, subscribe to our church's content and uh, help us to get the gospel moving forward. Amen. Uh, we will see you back here next week. Once again, I love you and may God bless you.